What's going on guys? So today we're talking about fanny packs. That's right, fanny packs. They're back in. It's a thing. So uh, the video is really about this fanny pack, the Roaring Fire. This is the Blazer. Um, but I can't just go ahead and whip out a fanny pack and not tell you my fanny pack history. <laughs> the, what led me up to end up getting one of these. So um, let's start back in, I don't know, 1990 maybe when I was like six years old. Um, you know, of course, you know, in the 80s, fanny packs were totally in, and in the early 90s, they were still kind of there. Uh, mostly, you see people wearing fanny packs like on vacation and stuff, it wouldn't be a daily thing. And then of course, you know, mid to late 90s, they just kind of faded away, 2000s, 2010s, it's just no one, no one wore fanny packs. But all of a sudden, there was a resurgence of fanny packs, and specifically, not around the waist, all right? It's like, was super hip, I don't even know if it still is, I'm not really, you know, in the in crowd, so to speak. Uh, but I, I guess, I mean, I still see it uh, occasionally when I'm out in public, but it's when uh, a dude will wear a fanny pack crossbody, okay? So it's over one shoulder, you know, across the body on an angle, and uh, it's just easy. It's like a, a purse, right, or a man purse. Um, it's just a thing. Not everyone's into it, of course. You know, any, any kind of trend or fad, um, it's not for everyone. But there's plenty of people uh, doing it. But I've never been, you know, super into caring about what other people think. Obviously, I carry the neck knife. A lot of people probably uh, look down upon me or judge me because I have a knife on my neck. So um, as far as the crossbody thing, I actually tried that. When I first started seeing that was a trend, I tried it. I, of course, didn't have like, you know, an expensive trendy, uh, you know, Fendi or whatever, you know, Versace. I don't even know what brands you would get, but it was a fashion thing. You know, you're really into clothes and, and sneakers and, and the whole thing. So it was kind of an accessory, but it was really useful. You had a big old pouch, you know, you could put a bunch of stuff in. Um, but when that trend kind of started, uh, I ended up having, or I dug this out. I had this one for years. All right, and actually my wife used this for a while. This is a uh, Columbia, uh, of course, a clothing company, but one of their fanny packs, all right? Simple, it's green, it's got some you know, leather accents. Uh, and this is basically just one big pocket. That's it, okay? And there's, there's a key tether in here, which I still have a night eyes uh, attached in there. Um, but yeah, this is just one big old pocket. It's simple, just throw a bunch of loose stuff in here. Again, it's kind of like, uh, you know, really geared towards vacation. You know, maybe you're at Disney World or something, or you're doing a road trip, you know. It's just nice to just have a bunch of extra stuff in here, okay. Maybe you're going to the beach. It's a great thing for the beach. You got your suntan lotion in here, you know. This is big enough to have like a bottle of water, whatever. You know, maybe medicine. Just depends on what you're into. But anyway, so, you know, there's also a front pocket, obviously. Uh, in fact, I, I didn't use the front pocket all that much, <laughs> to be honest, when I carry this. Because a lot of times I'm, I'm doing like a concealed carry type deal. So what happened was the trend, I started to see people uh, wearing this. And so then I started doing crossbody when I was like walking around the block or really kind of staying local. If I was out for the day, I never wore a fanny pack. You know, it's just, uh, I preferred to have, you know, my firearm, uh, you know, on my hip uh, or in the pocket or whatever the case may have been. Um, when it gets really cold out, I usually wear a chest rig, which is really awesome, just super comfortable. Uh, usually when it's be able to uh, be hidden by either a sweatshirt, you know, uh, or jacket. Uh, obviously can't do that in the summer when you're you're not layered up but uh so yeah essentially i started carrying this but like i said just kind of kept it local and i was you know messing around uh and it was crossbody okay it was very large i had my full size uh, glock 19 in here and that was basically it i didn't carry a bunch of different gear you guys know I, I have stuff in my pockets i always have stuff in my vehicle things that are close by so it wasn't like an edc type bag which years ago i really got into you know and like max Edition first hit the scene I, I was all over it. I had so many different, you know, bags and the Versi pack was awesome. And I started carrying a bunch of crap all the time. This is actually predating the, you know, cool crossbody uh, fanny pack. Okay, so we had like EDC bags. It was super tactical. I had everything for any situation. And uh, sometimes the stuff came in handy, but you know, no wars broke out. I didn't, you know, get lost in the woods and have to survive for three days. So a lot of that stuff just kind of sat there uh, and never got used. So eventually that kind of faded away. I'm like, why am I carrying all this weight? And I went through so many different stages of like, you know, things to have on me. And, but the fanny pack kind of came back and uh, this one was okay just for local stuff. But then I ended up watching a video. I happen to watch a lot of different gun channels and one of the bigger ones is uh, TFB TV with James Reeves. And of course there's a couple of the dudes that are on the, uh, the channel. 
But I find him very entertaining, a pretty funny dude, uh, but uh, also very educational. I see a lot of different gun stuff that you know, normally I might not be exposed to. But he has a, a cool kind of comedic way about delivering that information, which I really enjoy. I, I think he's very entertaining. So he did a whole video on fanny packs, all right? And in that video, I saw this one and I fell in love with it, all right? This one is, uh, um, what is it? Helicon Tex is what it is. And uh, specifically, I mean, that's the brand, but specifically this one is their Possum, okay? Which is a little bit smaller. So I ditched this, you can see the difference inside. I mean, this is huge, basically two pockets, one big old pocket, which I use for my full-size uh, pistol. So I ditched that, all right? And I got into this. Super tactical, very compact. You can see it, you know, on my hand here. So this actually carried around the waist for a little while. A uh, little side note, I did not use the included strap because it wasn't big enough for me because I'm a big dude. <laughs> so I had to use one of my Maxpedition uh, straps I took off another bag. I kind of jimmy rigged it. But it worked out fine for a little while. Carry this on the waist. T-shirt just kind of over it. It really didn't stand out. It was nice. Um, this is, again, super tactical. You can look at his, I would actually recommend watching his video on uh, fanny packs and stuff. You just search it. But uh, very good quality. Again, uber tactical. These are actually quite expensive. I was going to get this on Amazon. I forget the price, but it was, it was like, wow, for a fanny pack? It was like, I don't know, 50 or 60 bucks, something like that. Um, I forget what I did. I think I ordered it direct. I don't really remember now. Uh, but I remember getting a better price. I want to say I probably paid like 40 for this, 40-ish, something like that. I forget. This is a while back, uh, a couple months ago. Uh, this is basically like when summer, not just started, but maybe like a month into summer is when I, I started doing the whole fanny pack thing. Uh, but these are, it's a company I think out of Portland, Oregon, and they're made in Vietnam, but they're really good quality. Uh, the straps do come off, all right? So if you didn't want to use this strap and you want to fish your belt through here, uh, these tuck in, and then there's a whole, you know, flow through design here. So you could just put this directly on your belt. So you have the option of either like unclipping it to take it off, or if you want more security, especially if you have a firearm in there, uh, you would fish your belt through here. So like I'll say someone just grabbed this and tried to pull, it wouldn't go anywhere. You know, it'd literally be on you as opposed to just unsnapping this and stealing all your stuff. Um, but what was also really cool about this is it had the little pocket in the back, which is nice. So I actually put some, you know, spare money and stuff in there. Um, these have stiff zippers, all right? They're like reinforced zippers here so that uh, they're not really flopping around. There's a front pocket, which uh, I didn't use the front pocket all that much. Again, the, the focus for me really was a different way to uh, conceal carry. Um, but the, the whole thing with this is you, you were supposed to get like a little bit of access to it. You know, watching his videos, he did, again, testing, taking the gun out, taking a shot and stuff. And I was just impressed with this one. So, of course, I had the zipper all the way down the side, but you would keep these zippers towards the top here. You'd reach down with both hands. I mean, you could do it with one hand, but reach down with both hands kind of a little bit off to your side. This is not directly in front of me. It was more at the like, I don't know, one or two o'clock position. So it wasn't really on my side at three. It was more like on an angle here. But I can easily reach down and just do that. And then I can dip in and I was able to grab my uh, pistol. And this just fit <laughs> my uh, Glock 43, okay? And that was before I put the, uh, the light on it. So you can see on the inside, I mean, if you, you know, guns aren't in consideration whatsoever, I still think this is awesome. Um, just because there's so many different, you know, pockets and things. You can see there's a large pocket here, a couple of smaller pockets. There's some straps as well. We have a mesh pocket on this side. You can really fill this out with like, you know, EDC stuff. You got your chapstick and your, maybe a spare pocket knife and you got a flashlight and batteries and the list goes on and on. You can deck these things out any way you want. But really my whole goal was again, having an option for carrying my pistol uh, in the summer, keeping my pockets free. A lot of times if I'm wearing like, you know, basketball style shorts um, or shorts that didn't have, you know, any stability, I can't wear a gun belt, you know what I mean? So, you know, even pocket carry, um, the 43 was just pulling my pants down, pulling my shorts down, you know? So the fanny pack was actually awesome. Uh, I didn't wear this consistently. This was just every now and again. Uh, a lot of times I went out, like I had like, you know, cargo shorts and I could wear a belt and then I, I pocket carried the, uh, the 43. But um, it was just another option, which was really cool. But I was totally sold on this. I do love this and might uh, you know, carry this in the future as well, uh, maybe next summer. But uh, anyway, that was the, um, the possum from Helicon Tex. So, started off with the Columbia. You know, it's kind of cheap, simple, whatever, generic. And then I went Uber Tactical, which was smaller and compact. It was just big enough, again, to fit that, that 43 with the standard uh, magazine. Um, and it was fine, you know, but didn't wear it all the time. Then, 
about two or three weeks after the or after I purchased the possum that's when uh, Roaring Fire came out with their blazer fan pack okay now I put this back into the original configuration I didn't carry it like this um, this thing is is large again compared to this it's it's huge but compared to this one it's small so it really just kind of depends on how big of a fanny pack you're willing to to carry and also whether you're you know belt carrying it or uh, you know like actually carrying around the waist as a design or if you're crossbody if you're crossbody you have a lot more I think versatility to have a much bigger bag and all kinds of other stuff but anyway uh, this did come with a bottle holder which is actually really nice and works really well this would be fantastic um, for camping uh, going on a campsite or hiking, specifically hiking, you can have a nice uh, Nalgene bottle in here or a regular, you know, regular plastic water bottle, whatever you want. It actually carries a bunch of different stuff. You can cinch it down if you want. Uh, and then, of course, there's all these uh, straps on the front. You've got Velcro. So it's super tactical. You know, you can deck this thing out any way you want. But I didn't carry it with this. I took this off. All right. Now, one of the features I really liked about this because I knew I wouldn't be consistently carrying a fanny pack all the time is this back panel. Okay, so this back panel has a simple strap. Okay, which is of course adjustable. It's a much smaller strap than the waist strap. Uh, and the purpose of this is this whole back panel is Velcro. All right, so what you would do is you would mount this. All right, let's say you're sitting in the back seat of your car. You mount this on the uh, back of the headrest, like let's say driver side or, or passenger side, doesn't really matter, I suppose. Uh, passenger side is probably a little bit better because you can easily reach it from the driver's side without getting out of the vehicle. But anyway, you would uh, just put this, the strap around the two bars that go into the actual seat body. And uh, you'd be able to easily mount this uh, on the back of your, your headrest, right? So let's say you're not using it all the time. Instead of it sitting in a closet or something, you can still keep useful gear in your vehicle. And if you wanted to take it off, it's just really easy. You just rip it off, right? And now you have your fanny pack ready to go. You can store your actual strap on the inside. Um, and it's just a nice option, you know? In fact, some people might like this not even to ever carry as a fanny pack, but just to have a nice uh, pouch for your vehicle. Or maybe you can use this for your med kit. Maybe it could be your EDC stuff, you know, but you don't want to actually carry it on you. You go to the car, but you want to like rifle through it and it's a little uncomfortable doing it in the car. You can just, again, rip this off and fiddle with it outside or whatever. It's just a really interesting, um, you know, accessory. I think it's really cool. So this I have used and will use. The bottle uh, holder, again, haven't used this yet. I didn't really go hiking with this ever. Uh, since I've had, I walked around the block once or twice, but I didn't actually do like a trail or anything. That's when I would pop this back on. But just to show you this real quick, I'm actually gonna take it off. All right, let's show you how I actually carry this thing. So on the back here, see there's just some, some Velcro. So you undo the Velcro, you slip this right off. And you can use this anywhere. Of course, it's just, you know, just a strap. Uh, you could fish this just on your belt. So it's kind of like a whole little system here. So let's say you didn't want to carry that. You want to leave it in your car or at home or whatever. And you're just going for a walk. Well, you want a bottle holder? You have a bottle holder. It's just kind of nice. All right. But uh, the actual strap itself, there's Velcro on both sides that keep it stable. But you can undo that Velcro and slip the whole uh, strap off. Again, to store it separately if you just wanted this in the car. But anyway, go ahead and clip this. All right. This is the same deal for me being a bigger dude. I did have to use a different strap. So I took this strap off, utilized that space in the back for that same max edition strap. All right, so all these fanny packs, obviously if you are plus sized and beautiful, <laughs> well, even if you're not beautiful, if you're a big person, uh, keep that in mind. These, uh, you know, fanny packs only, you know, it's, it's like buying a belt, you know? It can be adjusted, but it can only get so big. So if you are, you know, in the, uh, maybe bigger 2x, 3x, 4x. I mean, these things are going to be uh, a crapshoot. Oh, well, if you're a 4x, it's not going to fit you, period. Um, I kind of teeter back and forth between 2x and 3x, um, and this just barely didn't fit me. You know what I mean? If I lost maybe, I don't know, 5, 10 pounds, maybe I could have got it to click, but it would have been, you know, pretty tight on me. Just something to keep in mind across the board with fanny packs if you're, if you're a big dude or a big lady and you're considering this, uh, definitely consider that. You might have to get like an aftermarket uh, waist strap or something but anyway uh, I like the bungees on the front specifically for you know day hiking or something like that you know if you have a light jacket on you can take it off and just fish it through there that's kind of a nice option um, but it's something that I didn't utilize I didn't utilize the outside here there's a velcro uh, strip here you can put your patches on if you have a name tape or something which is pretty cool obviously some more uh, spots here you can clip things to maybe your you know a spare knife or something flashlights whatever but uh, I basically just use the two main pockets here. All right, so the pocket on the back, 
open this up. You can see we have a kind of a mesh pocket on the front here, all right, which is nice. So you can quickly, you know, see what's going on there, but everything is contained in the pocket. And then we have these three loops, large loops, all right. So when I first started carrying this again, considering concealed carry and wanting to carry in a fanny pack, I was able to fit in this middle strap perfectly, the Glock 43 with a, um, a light on it, okay. Um, I have a Streamlight. The Streamlight, I forget the exact model, but it's the one that, you know, just kind of mounts to the, uh, the frame there. So that particular setup fit perfectly. Like literally the muzzle's here, right on the seam. Back of the gun is right here. It was fairly easy to access that. I did practice a bunch, um, you know, trying to, you know, basically dry fire, but from the pouch closed. So I'd have the pouch, and I just kind of did this in the bedroom, you know. Had my, my uh, zippers up here. I tried a couple different things at first, same thing, went down with both hands, just a quick zip, then I can dip down, pull out the, uh, the pistol. Uh, then I tried just this, which I found worked a little bit better, um, is doing the one hand, because I mean, you know, there's all these different scenarios, people will play out, you know, what are you gonna do if one, you get shoot, shot in the arm and you only have one hand? That's pretty rare. Uh, I'm hoping to never use my, my gun, but you know what, I get it, it's a valid point. So then I ended up just keeping these off to the side right on the corner here so I can quickly just zip it with one hand, my right hand, which is my drawing hand, and then I can uh, dip down and grab that gun. And that seemed to be just a little bit faster, um, and I didn't have to twist my body as much anyway because I'm not using both hands. So that's pretty much what I use this for. In the front pocket, I did carry a couple extra things, some batteries, flashlight. Uh, I always carry spare knives, which are totally unnecessary. But you can see the layout here, again, a ton of room. I didn't pack this up too much because it was mainly about the gun, and that was also creating a lot of weight. Uh, so keep in mind, you know, I have my pistol in here. I didn't want to load this out with a bunch of other metal and, you know, different gear and stuff and have the thing weigh, you know, 10 pounds. So uh, just a couple random things. Big pocket, two little pocket, or smaller pockets, I should say. There's still a ton of room in there. And then a bunch of straps, all right? This is also a pocket as well, this whole back part here. I do like the high-vis orange on the inside. Uh, it actually kind of helped in dimly lit um, areas. I, I noticed that when I opened this, because obviously it's like an OD green, which by the way, I think they have a different color now. Uh, I, got, I got this the second these were released. This is like straight up OD green. But now, you know, it looks a little bit like a lighter color. But anyway, um, I did notice when I opened this that orange really did stand out. It was a little easier to see in there, which is kind of cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, fanny packs. I want to know if you guys have fanny packs, carry fanny packs. Uh, it's totally a summer thing for me. Again, it was just another way to carry a pistol. That was my main goal, my main purpose. Uh, but now that, of course, you know, I own this one and I own the uh, the Possum, I will utilize those in the summer. Uh, I don't know if I'll carry my uh, pistol in them again. It was okay. It wasn't bad. It's not the fastest access. It's more about comfort. You are giving up the uh, quick accessibility to draw you know, if you're carrying, you know, inside the waistband or even outside the waistband, even pocket carry is just, just a little bit faster, in my opinion, than in a fanny pack, but you get the comfort factor. And you're also opening up your pockets for other stuff. You know, when I carry, um, you know, my 43 in the pocket, or I have a Smith & Wesson that I carry in the pocket occasionally, uh, when I do pocket carry like that, I lose that whole pocket. My front right pocket is uh, it's a big deal because I usually have a lot of stuff in there. You know, now I have to transfer my, you know, the main knife for the day down into the cargo uh, pocket. You know, I kind of clip that on the left seam, if that makes sense. So basically, instead of reaching down my right pocket, I reach just a little lower, five or six inches, and then that's where my knife is. Um, but it becomes a little inconvenient. You know, I carry so much gear, uh, it becomes complicated. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be complicated. But even if you don't carry a gun whatsoever, I mean, that was my focus throughout this entire journey of fanny packs and stuff. Uh, if you just want more EDC stuff on you, again, you can crossbody, you can carry it around the waist, you can put it in the back of your waist if you want when you're hiking. I wouldn't necessarily have your fanny pack with all your stuff on your back uh, in public, just, you know, for the obvious reason. Someone might just be, you know, slick and be able to unzipper it without you knowing and taking your stuff. Um, I never really wore these things, like, you know, at the stores, if I went to Walmart or Target or the mall or anything like that. Um, I just felt like they were a little bulky for that particular scenario. Um, I just had my, my normal EDC thing that I've been doing for years. But I like to experiment. I like to do different things. So I like the idea of it when there was less of a threat. Does that make sense? So in other words, when I carried my pistols uh, in these fanny packs, all three of them, it was more so for animals as opposed to people. 
All right, so I mean by that is when I'm walking around the block and stuff, and you know, it's dusk, uh, maybe a bear's walking by, you know, I live in northeastern Pennsylvania. We have wild cats, although you're not gonna see them very often, but you know, it's actually kind of common to see like maybe a rabid fox or something during the day. You just never know. So it was more for wildlife and a little less for people. Uh, as far as people are concerned, if you're going into an area and you do conceal carry or open carry, whatever, if you have a, a firearm on you, and you know you're in a, in a high risk area, maybe a really bad neighborhood, maybe there's a lot of crime, a lot of violent crime, a lot of gang activity, things like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this just because it's a slow draw in comparison to a lot of different options. Uh, but it is convenience. So you have that, that kind of balance here. You know, how quick can I get to my gun? How comfortable it is to carry? And, uh, you know, as a lot of people say, there's guys that carry all the time and then they just slowly stop carrying because it's just uncomfortable. But the whole purpose of, of having that gun in the first place is to have it on you, you know, anywhere you are. It's not just about being home. Uh, but anyway, uh, these are awesome. I, I would recommend both the Roaring Fire uh, Blazer as well as the Possum from uh, Helicon Tex. Um, these sell for 43 bucks, I think, $42.99 or $43.99, somewhere in and around that, that range. Uh, so this one's just a little bit cheaper. You do get, I mean, it's kind of cool having the headrest option. That's, that's kind of a big deal for a lot of people. Again, if you're not consistently carrying it like I am, it just doubles as an actual pouch for your car, which is awesome. Um, and then, of course, you know, having the separate bottle holder, that's, you know, I think it's really neat because you can just use it by itself. It's just nice. Uh, if this didn't have this at all, I, I wouldn't have cared either way, <laughs> but it's just nice to get a little more for your money. But yeah, I, I've always been a, a fan of the uh, the Roaring Fire stuff. You guys know I, I really like their um, you know tool bags. I use this all the time for all kinds of stuff. And I actually switched over. I, I'm using two of them for my multi-tool collections. I've actually broken them up into basically Leatherman and then other <laughs> because I have a bunch of different brands. Uh, but then I have a third one, the original one, I do actually use as a tool bag. I have all my tools in there, I have all my wrenches and stuff. Um, and I actually just broke those out not too uh, long ago to, uh, to you know, fit around with my toilet. My toilet was loose at the base. So uh, they, they are very handy as actual tool bags. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to touch upon the subject of fanny packs. I'm curious, do you guys wear a fanny pack? Uh, you ever toy with the idea of it? If you do, do you, con well, you don't have to say whether you conceal carry. It's probably... Better to leave it off the internet. Of course, I share a lot of my life with, with you guys. Uh, I'm open about stuff like that, but some people are a little more reserved. Uh, but I'm just curious if you if you carry a fanny pack, and if you do, what is your favorite fanny pack? Let everyone know down in the comment section so they can research it. If they're thinking about getting one, they can pick the best one for them. So that is all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.